It is done. The SUXR STL files are online on RC JetPrint and ready for download for you. And in this video, I want to bring you this jet closer and explain what it is, what it can and what you will get on your printer. The SUXR is an acrobatic EDF jet. It is based on the SU-47. The whole story about this project, which uh, starts in 2013, you can find here. There's a whole video series about this project when I started this. And now it is possible for all of you to print this jet. The most visible specialty on the SUXR are the wings. The forward swap wings and this gives this jet special agility yeah, for a very high acrobatic performance. Yeah, you can fly nearly everything you can imagine what you want to do with this jet. And additional to this aerodynamic design, there is a very powerful electric drive installed with two. 64mm EDF on 4S LiPo batteries that you got more thrust than weight. Yeah? The weight to thrust ratio is better than one so you can go vertical and you got very big deflection surfaces that you got always the control. Additional to this there is also a gyro installed which helps you to keep the control over the airplane all the time. And I would say Let's take a look inside the jet. So I would say let's start directly on the front. The complete nose you can remove easily. Yeah? You can decide on your own if you put in these magnets or if you glue it to the next section. Yeah? So it is uh, more easy for transport and also um, if you maybe has a bad landing it is uh, really easy to print this, this thing new or it uh, will easily drop off and the damage is, is really low yeah, for a bad landing. And the next is the canopy. This is also super easy to remove uh, by magnets. When we take a look here inside, we can see the battery compartment. The battery will be slide in there. And also underneath our logo is the retract, the front gear retract. If you like to install a retract, it would be there. And the next hatches, on both sides are for the canard and elevator servos. Yeah? So this is super easy to reach for fine adjustment yeah? that you got the, the center position. The zero position of the canard is very easy to find. This is just between the inlet and the fuselage. This gap yeah? and this gap the nose of the canard shows. Then you have the neutral position on the elevator. It's the uh, same. Here we can see the nose of the elevator is just between this red uh, fin and this gray fuselage. Here we got our next hatch. All hedges are held with magnets. Yeah? So there is no additional tools or screws or anything needed. Here we can see the two ESCs and the EDFs underneath. Also the yellow ducting. Yeah? So if you want to do some maintenance and check something, this is really easy to reach. So let's close the hatch again. And next we can see this small spots here. This is the CG of the SUX. And for checking and leveling, we just need um, these three millimeter carbon rods. They can go in there. And then we lift it up on these rods. And if it is leveled, yeah, like this or goes slightly to the nose, we got the right CG. You can easily do it. This is also important when you install maybe the, the front cam or other batteries. So you can do it also on the airfield, checking this CG. This is very important for this jet. Okay, let's go to the next hatch. This is our RC compartment. Here we can see the gyro, the receiver and the telemetry. It's also super easy to reach and for checking and installing. And we have got the same system with the two magnets. And let's go over to the last compartment on the upper side. This is the, the vector servo compartment. Here we can see the three vector servos to move the vector nozzles. And 
As always, we got our magnets and can reach everything quite easy. Here we can see also one of the specialties of the SUX. This is the 3D vector nozzle system. Yeah, so it, it became possible that you can fly post stall. Yeah, even when the wing is completely stalled, you got control over the jet even by these vector nozzles. And they make it also possible to fly these incredible maneuvers. Yeah, also for recovering in extreme situations. So let's take a look to the lower sides. Here we can see our landing skids. Yeah, on this the SUX can land on any surface. This is for safety and if you don't install any landing gear. But the SUX is ready prepared for landing gear. Yeah, just, just below these hatches uh, you can easily install our adapters, they are made for um, mini retract uh, mechanics. Yeah? So everything is prepared and you can easily install it. Here you can see it, how it would be look like. Yeah? This uh, leg just has to be a little bit longer and a bigger tire. But, um, this is, would be really easy to install. Yeah? But this one should be super lightweight. So I didn't install any gear and also our airfield is not <laughs> that, that flat, I think. You would need concrete yeah, for, for a good start and good performance. But nevertheless, let's go on. Here we can see the hatch for the lower RC compartment. Here is the BEC installed and also a lot of cables. Just behind this we got our uh, lower vector compartment. Yeah. Here in this, in this hatch there is a big hole. This is the air outlet from the cooling you saw on the top. There are these Tunaka inlets and also in the nose there is the inlet to bring fresh and cool air in, into the airplane that should run all through the jet and here's the place to get out. That's why here is a big opening. Just behind this we can see these small skids. They are here to save the, the vector nozzle linkage for any damage. I will show you this when you, when you got a landing with a very steep angle of attack. The plane would touch at first on these um, little skids and there is, there is no damage on the vector nozzles itself. Yeah? And then it can touch down on the skids yeah? and this works really nice. And here we can see these um, big fins. They work like our vertical stabilizer. They give stability on the yaw axis. So they are really important for the whole jet. Yeah? And at the end here we can see the linkage for the elevators and the lower side of the vector nozzle itself. So let's go on with the wings. The wings are also holded by little magnets on the front and on the back. You just have to connect the aileron servo and then it's, it's ready to put them on. We got an 8mm and a 6mm carbon rod. So we get very good stability and is also super lightweight. And here we can see the, the magnets. And also on the wings you can see these um, slats. These slats are for super slow flight capabilities. And it's very easy to remove them. Here are just two screws you got to loose and then you can get them off. And without these slats, this uh, plane will fly really fast. Yeah? So with these slats, it is for, for slow flying and without it's for fast flying. Yeah? This depends really up to you. Let's go to the vertical stabilizers. They are quite big and they can also be built detachable. Everything is prepared for carbon rods and magnets that you can easily remove them. In this case I glued them and we got big rudders for very good control on the yaw axis even on very low speeds. Yeah. And that's it. Let's take a look to the RC components we use in the SUX. At first we got our 64mm EDF. They got around 1.2 kg thrust each on 4S. We use 4000 to minimum 3300 milliamps and minimum 60C discharge rate on the SUX 4S LiPo always. And here we can see some gyros. The iGyro I got installed here. The iGyro I was already using for several years on my big SUX. Um, this got an integrated delta mix. This delta mix is quite important for 3D vector nozzling. 
but this is not absolutely necessary. Yeah, if you want to fly not for unlimited acrobatic, just for fun, there's also a normal gyro is quite okay. Yeah, but the gyro is needed for this airplane. This is caused by this forward swap wing. It is very agile on the elevator. Yeah, without gyro, it would fly like like this. Yeah, so a gyro is needed anyway but uh, not such a special gyro if you just want to fly normal pattern and normal acrobatic. Um, but for the gyro, I will make an extra video where I um, explain it on detail how to adjust the gyro for this jet. Yeah? Just too long for this moment. And here we can see the ESCs. The maximum current on this jet we measured was 124 amps together on both EDFs. Yeah, this means about um, 62 each. Yeah, so the ESC should be rated to 80 amps that you can be sure that it doesn't overheat inside the jet. And there we can see our servos. Here are two kinds of servo installed, um, some stronger ones on the canards and elevators and all the other servos are smaller ones but these servos should be fast anyway because the gyro just can stabilize the airplane when the, the inputs from the gyro can move all deflection surfaces really fast so under 0.1 second should be the speed of all the servos you use inside this jet this is additional this is our pitot yeah here is everything ready prepared on the fuselage this, this 3D printed part is also in the set included, can be put here. Here we can see the next add-ons. These are the holders for the mini retract, one of the SUX fuselage section with this retract installed. Just the leg has to be done by yourself. This is a three millimeter stainless steel rod, yeah, which has to be bended and um, about um, 50 millimeter wheel. Here we got our smoke cartridge holders. They will be installed on the end of the wings and this is um, just for fun if you want to fly with some smoke when you do some acrobatics this looks really nice yeah so we put it on and uh, next we got here our fpv plate yeah if you like to fly this jet as fpv plane have to change your canopy and put on this, this plate here you can put all your camera stuff and you can fly it fpv also for filming we put in these cam nose holder and also these um, pla parts for mounting the camera you can put it in any position you like to if you want to film from the front or put it a little to the side yeah for every footage you want to make of your jet be really nice for you so i would say enjoy your print and we see us in the next video. Bye bye.